Hi, Auntie Society! Welcome back to the Antisocial Blend, and today we are checking out episode 7 of Spy Family. So in the last episode, we had Anya finally starting out at her school and being a little bit nervous about it because there's obviously a lot weighing on her being in this school for the mission. She has to befriend the son of their like ultimate target that they're going after so that they have like an in to talking to him and getting to his house. A lot of pressure on our little Anya to befriend this particular boy and obviously starting at a new school can be really nerve wracking too, especially since this school looks so intimidating. I have never been in a building that fancy except maybe Parliament. I went to Parliament a few times and it just floors me how ornate that building looks. So to me, I'm like, I'm used to like really cheap, run down looking schools because that's what I went to. So I would be so intimidated to walk into this school that just has like the biggest cafeteria. I feel like cafeteria is like a, not the right word for it. Dining hall. <laughs> I feel like I need fancier terminology. I've never seen a school with that fancy of a dining hall before. So I would be intimidated. Our poor little Anya was. But she did end up meeting the boy that she needed to befriend named Damien. I'm pretty sure she has met him. He's not very nice. He seems to think very highly of himself. But of course, he's also probably been told that he is very important for a long time. When you grow up in a prestigious family, I say as someone who did not grow up in a prestigious family, you've probably been told a lot that you are important or your family is important and that people look up to you and that kind of a thing. So I, I can forgive a certain amount of self-importance, especially since he's a child. I think we were all very self-centered as children. I know I was. I think back to some of the things that I did and I'm like, why? Why are you like this? He could he could improve, you know, he could become a better person. The two of them did meet. Anya was trying to play aloof. She didn't seem to like him very much, especially since she could like read his thoughts. So she probably has a better idea of what is going on than anyone else does. So she put on this very... <laughs> unnerving smile of hers to try and smile through this moment so that she wouldn't act out in anger in some way uh but she didn't e she did end up punching him which uh while satisfying got her into a little bit of trouble but i do wonder if it'll be a turning point for them both in that it could be that Damien makes it his mission to be entirely awful to Anya, which seems like something to make me really, really dislike him because we love Anya. Or it could be that turning point of him seeing that he's finally met someone who isn't just going to kiss up to him or accept his behavior. He's seeing someone that is going to stand up to him. And while that might rub him the wrong way right now, it might teach him something valuable. So we'll see how that turns out. Anya did seem to make another friend who also seems a little bit off too with some of her thoughts and some of the things that she says but at least she is interacting with some of the other kids and kind of building up her relationships with them but we'll have to see what plan c plan d is from lloyd because his plan a was for her to befriend damien and uh sort of gone down toilet a little bit because he sees it as Anya and Damien not having a chance of becoming friends. So I'm sure that Lloyd is scrambling to come up with something else, but I'm very excited to get into this episode and see what shenanigans ensue. So let's get into episode seven. In three, two, one, go. I remember how to count <laughs> my fingers. <laughs> We cooking? Baking? Is that like a meditative thing for him? I still love that he had the popper like at the ready if they got the phone call that she was in. <laughs> oh, right. There was the scholar thing. So like plan A was being the like Stella literally just said it in end of my brain now. And then plan B was befriending Damien. Yeah, but uh that one took a little bit of a turn. <laughs> oh keeps trying to do something fancy with the ketchup. Ain't it always the way though? 
then it like spurts all over the place and you're like, well, okay then. <laughs> At some point, I'm going to have to check out the full version of the song. But I also get very enthusiastic about music. <laughs> My music reaction should be really short, because songs are like five minutes, and yet they're usually really long because I get excited about things. Just like enjoying the opener at this point. <laughs> I'm so happy that last episode we finally met sort of the woman in the glasses and hat. That she's like kind of in charge. The operation behind the scenes. Getting Lloyd what he needs. Even when he rents a castle. <laughs> and the budget goes way up. Oh. <laughs> well, look at him having breakfast ready at just the right time. Oh, she's so cute, her little nightcap. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, you can't erase the past, but you do get to decide what happens in the present. <laughs> I, sp I feel like Anya's especially worried about that because it'll seem like acting out, and as a kid who went through, like, adoption and stuff like that, that I'm sure any sign of acting out she probably feels a lot of panic because she'll see that as like her probably having to leave her family because I'm sure that that happened before of she behaved in a way that caused her families to put her back up for adoption so I'm sure that she has a lot of turmoil about that and then to have Lloyd be like no I won't be mad like we can't change the past but just do better now you know it's fine you know um, I'm sure it means a lot to Anya <laughs> the really intense spy music. Becky, that was the girl. <laughs> you know, Anya, like, took the bus, too. Like, that kind of shows the difference between her experience and then the other kids. Oh. <laughs> he steals the bandage. Oh, is she going to apologize? That's such a like brave thing to do though. If Admitting that you did something wrong. <gasps> oh, she was trying. But world peace. <laughs> oh my gosh, Lloyd. <laughs> he's worried, so he's checking in. How much do you want to bet your is somewhere also? Keeping an eye on things. And they'll probably not see each other. <laughs> Ominous lighting, but okay. Why is it so dark?
Aww. Poor Anya. True. People really like to take one trait and just like amplify it to be an entire person's personality. Oh, I like that Becky's being nice to her, though. Because at least she has, like, that one... <clears throat> oh, sorry, I lose my voice. At least she has, like, one grounding point, you know? See, he's like, no one had ever defied him before. So I feel like... It could be a result of him feeling vindictive towards Anya, or it could be, like, a turning point of him, like, realizing that, um, he kind of needs someone to defy him a little bit. You know, knowing he can't get away with everything might be a good growing point for him. Oh no. We're tuning out. I used to sleep during class too, so I get this mood. <laughs> Especially math, because honestly, I was pretty good at math. So if I was going to tune out of any class, it'd be that one. <laughs> like the second sun. <laughs> Oh. Is Lloyd in disguise as the janitor? I just see someone with blonde hair and I'm assuming that it must be him in, in disguise. <laughs> oh. Oh no. Maybe? <laughs> He's got like a fake nose on. <laughs> He's a master of disguise. <laughs> like he's sending your secret messages. <laughs> she wants to apologize I feel like that is a good starting point you know it's really difficult to like what admit you're wrong and then to face the person that you think you did wrong to and like actually said I did something wrong <laughs> like, it's just leaving messages everywhere. <laughs> Subtle. Oh, see, they called it a cafeteria. It seems like a not fancy enough term, though. New plan. <laughs> wow. Got to the intercom system. <laughs> like how tiny she looks. Maybe you look less aggressive. Oh, don't you just want to put her in your pocket and protect her, you know? 
She's so cute. <laughs> like they, they like both like, what are feelings? <laughs> Does he apologize? First? Oh. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't know I needed a raccoon Anya in my life, but I did. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I like the light and the petals. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little darling, I just want to hug her. It is. Look, we all love Anya. There's nothing to be shy about. Okay? We all think she's adorable. We all have a soft spot in our heart for her. She's cute little bean. We love Anya. But probably in a different way than him. Because, you know, we don't need to be weird about it. Platonic love. You gotta take the apology. Look at the little face. <laughs> she tried though. You have to accept her apology. Did you see her little face? Poor <laughs> Lloyd. He has to keep changing the plan. He just wants things to go smoothly. I feel like Lloyd is a planner too. I'm the same way. I have a plan and I stick to it. And when things get in the way, it completely derails me. Oh. Oh. Oh, is he trying to make her a top student instead? <laughs> I don't know. You might just have to give it a little bit of time. I think you have a good path to some kind of friendship. At least an understanding. Oh no. He has very rambly thoughts right now. He's fallen down those thought spirals. We've all done it. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> She's overwhelmed. It's too much all at once, Lloyd. It's like I said, she probably feels like if she fails in some way, or doesn't perform well enough, that it's going to result in her being put up for adoption again, because I'm sure that that is something she's experienced a lot. They talked about her having lots of different families that put her back up for adoption.
another family's affairs. You are the mother. You are family. I'm very protective about her counting as part of the family. Oh, I need somebody to give Anya a hug. Like, someone. Because if it can't be me. I guess that is a good trait for you as, like, a mom, is the fact that she has a younger sibling, so she at least knows a little bit about interacting with a younger person or something like that. I'm the youngest sibling, so I don't really know what it's like to have to take care of a sibling, but I'm sure it gives her a little bit more prep than Lloyd, who doesn't really have any family. Aww. <laughs> I like how she's like, dismemberment, but insects? Gross, you know? <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, just be, like, excited when she gets things. Don't be disappointed when she doesn't. Positive reinforcement. Oh, it'll matter. You are her father, though. I refuse to accept any other title. <laughs> Honestly, that's usually the vibe of being a parent. That's what I get. <laughs> Sorry. You're not a stranger. You're part of this family. See? Thank you, Lloyd. Yeah, exactly. You're a good team, okay? Lloyd's got a lot of brains and he can be very comforting. But I feel like Yod has the heart, you know? And, like, the deadly fighting skills, too. True. Understand her. And just, like, be a team. Trust her, you know? But, like, not too much. Don't put everything on her. Team effort. Oh, is she trying to study on her own? Cute. You better record that show for her. <laughs> It 
it's complicated. <laughs> You are a real family. <laughs> that was such a little tender moment at the end. I do like that we got some time with Lloyd. Because I feel like we shifted away from him a tiny bit to focus on like Anya and some other stuff that was going on. But to focus on him as like a character as opposed to like mission-y stuff. And the fact that he got to be like both, you know spy twilight but then also like stressed out dad <laughs> it's like i love the two dynamics of that and how they intertwine <laughs> but i do really like that this show is constantly going back to the family dynamic and the relationships between the characters like it really is the like foundation of how everything works and it, yeah it's the mission for them to be a family but they just have to come off as a family they just have to have people see them that way the fact that they're constantly trying to develop and fit into that family dynamic like they're legitimately trying to help each other out and care they care about each other and the show is really good about just coming back to that in a way that doesn't feel forced and it doesn't feel like it's outside of the plot but just like giving them those moments to like be a family and to show that dynamic and the progression of it. Oh. New characters? <gasps> it's the brother. I wonder why we're meeting him now. Right, wasn't Dominic the one that was at the party? Is he gonna find out about the, the marriage? Yeah, she did. It's a bit of a whirlwind. She's got a kid too. Wait till you find out about that. <laughs> Ooh, are we gonna find out about Yodi then? In the next episode? That's exciting. I love how this show always like not that it doesn't have its moments where it's more serious or there's more intense things happening but it always wraps around to a very like supportive feeling and i talked about this a little bit at the end of the reaction where this group of people who have been kind of thrown together for a lot of different wacky reasons that they end up being together in this family unit is just so supportive of each other and i just appreciate that so much like i love seeing characters that legitimately have chemistry with each other and we're just allowed to have little moments that breathe and we get to see them just interacting with each other showing off their character like the character writing the show is great i love that in this one we got to see a lot of the insecurity of anya and i talked about that a little bit about you know I obviously don't have any experience firsthand of what it's like to be a foster child, but I've had friends that have grown up in foster care, so I at least have their stories of what it's like, and it very much feels, it can feel like you, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be too general, just so I'm like kind of rephrasing my words because I know that everything is situational, but so I feel like sometimes it can feel like you have to prove something. And I feel like with Anya, where she has been, you know, adopted by families and then sent back into foster care, that she feels that even more like she feels like there's something defective about her especially with her telepathy i don't know why i said that weird telepathy <laughs> especially with her telepathy which makes her different in general there aren't people just out there who are like her so it's an added thing and i feel like it's to kind of emphasize that otherness the fact that she doesn't feel like she fits somewhere so having this family that is basically this misfit gang that has come together they don't belong anywhere else and they're trying to figure out what normal is and they're really relying on each other to fill in the gaps of that means a lot to her she feels like she's in a space where people can be forgiving and understand her so 
to feel like anything is detrimental to that i feel like it's very difficult for her and she's very young i love how she is allowed to be a child i was talking to someone in the comments of one of my reactions about that where they don't try to make anya too grown up especially when she has this ability to read minds she can read the minds of adults she still feels very childlike so being a child who can't really regulate how you feel very well and then also have the added pressure of you have a lot of responsibility to make this work and then add that on to being very very scared that you could lose something that matters to you if you mess this up like there are so many layers to why Anya is just so hard on herself in this and it's like one moment of weakness one moment where she acted out decided to not you know suppress how she was feeling by punching Damien resulting in all of these moments later all these ripple effects of her feeling like there's all this insecurity in her life now she finally found that foundation like this family that she could rely on and now she feels like she's messed it up somehow so i like that we got to kind of dig in to that and really see her as more than just a comic relief character or kind of just a childlike character who was you know in between the two minds of the parents we really got to dig into more of her motivations and i also like that we got to address lloyd's you know insecurities of him trying to make this work obviously from a comedic side of things which we've seen before but dealing with it in a more serious way of him just being like you know i really really need this to work because this is my job but also i need this to work in terms of like anya being okay like i feel like that's a big part of how Lloyd is feeling is he kind of got wrapped up in his mind and all of these thoughts rushing around because he's trying to make this work as his mission as his job and kind of got caught up in that and forgot that Anya is also a child and his child and he needs to protect her she, and that's like the foundation of his belief system is not wanting there to be a world where a kid is crying we learned that really early on he's very very protective of children being allowed to be children so I feel like having that moment of him kind of getting caught up in his own thing and then having you there to be like hang on she's a child like kind of stepping in and like I said being the heart of that moment and kind of taking the lead on that we've seen Lloyd be very good at being compassionate and being the heart and putting into perspective how he is a very like forgiving and empathetic person but because he was so caught up in his own thoughts he needed someone to step in and say like hang on a second let's remember that Anya is a person you're a person you know the other kids like Damien are also a person like there's so much complexity complexity to this. It isn't just the mission and going through the steps and having a plan and that kind of a thing. There's also emotions and lots of other things going on here too. So I like that she shared her story with her brother, which was a nice little segue into, I'm assuming, Yuri being in the next episode now that he's found out about the marriage and all of that. So I'll be excited to see that and the dynamic between him and Yuri because we've seen people who are like not really her friends interacting with her. And then we've seen her with Lloyd and Anya. We haven't seen her with just someone that she's actually very close to and has a lot of history with so i'll be excited to see what that dynamic is like but yeah just so many wonderful character moments in this episode and i love that since we're about halfway through the season i've excitedly been told that there is lots of story in the source materials there's probably going to be more seasons which i'm very very excited about if i don't end up just like being weak and going and reading the manga because that could happen i could just need the story you know so there's probably lots of other seasons but we're about halfway through this one i like that we're taking a moment to to really sit with some of the motivations and issues that the characters are going with, not so much with your that much. We saw it a little bit of her talking about her not being part of the family or being a stranger and I really like that Lloyd stepped in and was like, no, you're part of this family. Like, you're not a stranger. We're all part of the Forger family together. So we're kind of getting all of this development of like, what are their insecurities? What are their motivations? What are the things that they're personally going to have to overcome? That's not just, oh, the mission, which is like the main plot of the story. It's like, what are their own personal journeys? And I like that we're really taking a moment to let that breathe and sit with us in this episode, because I feel like it's going to be really important as they get closer to the end of this season. I know there's more story, but they need to wrap up in some way at the end of the season. So I feel like we're getting a hint of what that's going to be. I could really sit here and talk for a while about character development because I love it a lot but I'll leave it with I'm excited for the next one to see the brother sister dynamic as someone with a sibling so I'm sure that there'll be lots of comedic things in it as they try to keep their cover of being a married couple around Yuri. I feel like there has to be something related with his job. They've talked about it a lot so I feel like he's going to be important to what is going on because he's like for, foreign department of something. I'll have to probably go back and see it but I feel like his job is important anyway. <laughs> I could continue rambling, but I won't. You can click this playlist to go and see my previous reactions, or you can subscribe so this next time I post a spy family video, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!